already a national and international figure, but did the city of Philadelphia welcome Dr. King? I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Newsmakers. With me is Wynne Alexander. She's executive director of WDASHistory.org, and she's a civil rights author as well. Thanks for being with us. Pleasure, Jill. We're talking about 1965. This is really the height of Dr. Martin Luther King's influence, his speaking, he's traveling across the country, and he came here to the city of Philadelphia. What was that reception like? Because today we think of him as a beloved figure, someone who was obviously critically important in the civil rights movement. Well, let me say, to Philadelphia's great credit, Dr. King, in most circles, most and many, was extremely revered. He had already won the Nobel Peace Prize, as you've alluded to. Uh, but there was one person who wasn't a big fan, an enormously big figure in Philadelphia history, Cecil Moore Esquire, who was also the president of the Philadelphia branch of the NAACP. Cecil was quite a character for those who, who knew or have read about him. He was absolutely um, a cannon and, as he called himself, a lion roaring back. And he did not like Dr. King, and he did not want him in Philadelphia. And it got very, very bad. Other leadership in the city quite could not understand it. I just found an article from April of 1965 where no less than Georgie Woods and Sam Evans had turned their back on Cecil, would not speak with him. While the article doesn't say so, they mention Ralph Abernathy, and it appears it's all over this. There's no other way to put it. Cecil was sass-talking Dr. King. And was it an issue of territory? Was it an issue of disagreeing with tactics? Is there any sense as to why this relationship was acrimonious? I, I think that, um, suffice it to say, territory was probably a large factor. And there's also personalities. You know, people cannot get along or see eye to eye. However, a peace movement, a little mini movement, was put into place and uh, the general manager of WDAS Radio uh, did in fact broker the peace uh, between Cecil and Dr. King. There were three days of activities sort of announcing the new accord, the new spirit of cooperation. There were dinners at the Warwick Hotel. Roy Wilkinson himself came in from the national NAACP offices, so between August 2nd and, uh, I'm sorry, August, Monday through that Wednesday. Uh, and the peace agreement appears to really have been hammered out on Saturday. I believe it was a Saturday, July 31st, 1965. And, and with this, these gentlemen actually signed a paper recognizing this peace agreement. And as you mentioned, uh, there were uh, there was a parade, awards dinners, uh, a press conference related to this. But yes. this agreement really set the stage for moving forward here oh, in the city of Philadelphia. It, it was absolutely the reason for the press conference, which was held at the Bellevue. There is footage of that press conference at the Temple Archive, and if you go to the WDASHistory.org website, we have a link to the footage uh, from Temple University. It's quite a scream. I will tell you, the opening of the press conference opens with, whether on purpose or not, Cecil Moore uh, kind of blows smoke in Dr. King's <laughs> direction. It's, it's quite good theater this particular press conference. And as you mentioned, uh, people can find more information on your website about this uh, story from Philadelphia's past, but many others as well. Absolutely. Thanks for being with us. Pleasure. We've been talking with Wynne Alexander. She's executive director of WDASHistory.org. I'm Jill Horner.